And now for something completely different. Hey folks, my name is Jen, and today we are doing something slightly different today uh, by request by the girl's daughter, aka Evelyn, over at the GKPC, aka Jack is bored, um, has requested this video of my top 10 Beatles songs. And yeah, I had to take a little bit of time to think about this because while I know ultimately my favorite song of theirs ever, I really had to go through and think about like what my top 10 would look like. And in fact, I, I was able to pick like the top five like that. But as it got down a little bit more, I really had to do a lot of re-listening. I was talking to my husband about it and he was like listening to me explain my reasonings for what songs ranked where and whatnot. And he was like, wait a second, I need to think about my favorite songs um, at this point. So we had a nice discussion about the Beatles as well. But I, I have done it. I have my... Uh, top 10 songs. Uh, I think how I'm gonna do this, I'll probably go backwards from 10 up to the first one. Yeah, I guess we'll do it that way. Um, first, I'll just say quickly, there's a couple of honorable mentions, just because it was really close <laughs> with some songs, and it really took me uh, some time to think about this. Um, I mean, okay, so I have four honorable mentions, the first of which is Yesterday. That is honestly very iconic. I think it was one of the first songs that ever, uh, put me in my feelings deeply. <laughs> such It has like such a kind of maudlin, uh, it has such a melancholic feel to it, but the the music itself, just the, the perfection of the guitar and then coming in with the strings later on in the song, there's just something about it that's so like comforting even though it's really depressing. Um, so that was way up there. Um, come Together, there is nothing I think more iconic than that those opening notes of Come Together. Like it is instantly recognizable. It's such a strange little song but um, it's also yeah just very iconic, very um, <laughs> funny almost with some of it. Like, what even is Toe Jam Football? Do we know? I don't know. Another one, another honorable mention is Helter Skelter. I know that it is also iconic, I guess, as well. It's got a very specific song to it. My husband were actually, and I were actually talking about that um, when I was, like, having a hard time. That was actually on my list for number 10 between that and what actually became my number 10 and I really had to like think about it. And he was actually surprised <laughs> because it's a song that has like a, a certain edge to it that he didn't think that I'd really like because it's as he says very influential for a lot of other like bands um now like harder bands and stuff like that and but I think maybe that's partially why I like it because it sounds I mean, it's definitely the Beatles, but there's a different tone to it that sounds a little harder. And I don't know, it's the, the kind of song that you would think would be in a movie soundtrack when some shit was going down. Like, that's uh, that kind of sound to it. And then my last honorable mention is Now and Then. Um, when I first listened to it, I wasn't 100% sure how I felt about it, um, just because it's like, it's them but it's not but it 
you know, but I, I've listened to it several more times since then, and I also ended up watching the little film, uh, the short film that they made about putting everything uh, together in their process of creating this song, and I don't know, there's just something about it that makes me feel emotional now, so yeah, it's on, <laughs> it's on the honorable mentions. Coming in at number 10 is Across the Universe. So Across the Universe is, I think, my favorite of <laughs> what I call their, their acid journey <laughs> songs. Basically when they were really working at free in their minds. Um, yeah, it's my, it's my favorite, uh, out there song of theirs. Um, you know, like some of their others, like Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds, I Am the Walrus, which is always hilarious, Octopus's Garden. Like, when they're really expanding their 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 horizons, I think Across the Universe is up there for my favorite of those <laughs> odd ones. Um, it is beautiful and depressing at the same time, and I kind of like the juxtaposition of the absolutely beautiful um, music. Uh, the the whole thing is like um, a soundscape, basically, I guess, when you're listening to it. It's actually really nice to listen to it with um, headphones on, so it feels like you're surrounded. Of course, the beautiful voices, and it's just, it's, yeah, it's a good, it's a good one. Um, personally, I guess what pushes it up to the tenth spot are two other <laughs> factors. Uh, one, when I was a college freshman, in the first couple of months, I want to say, of being at my school when I'd met the people who were going to become some of my closest friends, but we hadn't really officially become friends and I hadn't really hung out with them at all yet. I was feeling very homesick and sad and alone and just all up in my feelings and uh, I think that was about the time I really started getting into like emo and stuff, but that is also the time when I listen to a shit ton of the Beatles because they always manage to make me um, happier when I'm not feeling too great. Like the Beatles and Yellow Card are pretty much my standby for making me feel just a little bit better. For some reason Across the Universe is the one that I latched onto and that was the one that I would listen to pretty much on repeat when I was sitting in my dorm room trying to pretend like I had a life even though I'm pretty sure my roommate could tell that I didn't at that point. Um, yeah, which that's a weird one to just say nothing's gonna change my world but somehow be feel comfort comforted by that I guess? I don't know. Uh, the second factor that pushes it up there for me is um, that that was a song and also the title of Across the Universe, the movie, and I uh, saw that when it came out. I think that, I think, I looked it up. It was like in 2007. I was trying to remember when it came out. It was like in 2007. Um, and I really loved that movie when it came out. I know that, like, that's, I've heard that it's kind of like a controversial thing for, like, Beatles fans, the movie, but, um, I liked it at the time. I had like a huge crush on Jim Sturgis, but um, yeah. Uh, I haven't seen it since then, so uh, I don't know how I feel about it now, but liked it at the time. But my ninth favorite Beatles song is Oh Darlin. So Oh Darlin is number nine because there is nothing quite like Paul's voice in that song. Like, sometimes you'll hear him throughout their discography and you'd be like, okay, 
boy can sing, obviously, um, all of them can sing, even to various degrees. Uh, John, of course, I think is one of the most iconic with his range, oftentimes, throughout their songs, but every now and again you'd be like, oh shit, no, Paul can fucking lay it down too. And I think that this song is like one of those times where it's like, yeah, do you hear like the like emotion in that? It's just, ah, oh, there's something about it that like gives me fucking chills and I love it. And honestly, it's sometimes late at night, I'll go into like this black hole on YouTube and I'll be like listening to covers that people have done of songs that I really like or um like singing audition things and like the voice and shit like that and um I love it always when I come across a Beatles cover especially when it's a cover of Oh Darling because it just there's something about it it just gives me chills whenever I hear it and I love it <laughs> and I think Oh Darling is like it also has elements to it that sound so much like the music that initially influenced them when they were first starting out as well. So uh, I think that that's what is also what I also really like about that and why it's up there on my on my list. For number eight, I could not possibly say that, hey, I consider myself to be some type of writer if I didn't have paperback writer somewhere on my um, top 10 Beatles list. Not that that's like a requirement if you're a writer to uh, particularly enjoy that song, but I think it should be. <laughs> Rack Writer just has this, like, beat that just gets you hyped, and I just, I don't know, I just love it. How it, it opens with all of them just going paperback writer, and then goes into the song itself. Like, that, uh, I'm... I'm sorry guys, I'm really bad at talking about music because I'm not a musician myself. My husband's the one that's like way more with the jargon and everything. The, the, I think I'm getting it right. The guitar riff, that riff that it opens with, you know, it's just, there's something iconic about that as well. Another one of their, like, their, I don't know, story songs. Kind of like um, uh, Penny Lane, uh, I guess Octopus's Garden also counts up in there, um, and, paper, and many others, and Paperback Writer is one of them. It's like telling a story. Uh, the narrator of the song is trying to become a paperback writer, and it's like just about like that process. What is the book about? Here's this thing. I, dear sir or madam, will you read my book? It took me years to write. Will you take a look? <laughs> it's like got a sick beat. It's playful and I, yeah, I love it. Number seven on my list is Revolution. You want to talk about iconic opening chords to a song? What the fuck even is that opening? It is badass. It just starts right into it. It, oh my gosh. It, it makes me so hyped every time I hear the start of it. It is one of those songs that I can't possibly skip. Like it, for me, it is an unskippable song. I ha once that opening chord happens, I have to listen to the song the whole way through. They're doing something really cool musically, but at the same time, I think the lyrics are what make it for me. Um, I was, well, in in some cases I still am, but 
when I was, as a teenager, uh, a giant fucking hippie, and something about revolution spoke to me a lot when I was a giant fucking hippie as a teenager. Um, and something about it still speaks to me at times. It we all want to change the world, but when you talk about destruction, don't you know that you can count me out? Don't you know it's going to be all right? I don't know. It's something that it has a kick-ass beat to it, and there's also something about it that... I don't know. I feel like every now and again, I personally need a reminder that... There should be less violence <laughs> in the world, um, even sometimes when I, you know, I think everybody gets reactionary and feels like that sometimes you gotta go to it, and I know that in the case of like a fight or a flight response, I'm 95% fight, but I don't know. Sometimes I feel like that's the song that serves as a kind of like a reminder of maybe, maybe not all the time. Maybe we don't need to be violent all the time. Maybe. Number six is All My Lovin'. I mean, there, again, I keep using the word iconic, but that's because just to me, that's what the Beatles are. They are I iconic. They're all my loving is, I think, out of all of their more like older songs um, from earlier on in their career. It makes it sound like it spanned out over time. I know they were only like together for not even that long, but. Um, that, that song, I think, out of all of their big ones from when they were, uh, first releasing, playing music and releasing it together, um, I think out of all of them, that is my tippy top song of theirs from that particular period, and it's part, it's kind of because I just love how everything sounds together. It's that original, like, iconic girls fainting when they're playing on a stage kind of, like, idea of what they were as a band originally. Um, and I like the the music, their harmonies together, ev everything that they're doing, and what puts that one, I think, up top ahead of, like, a lot of their others at that time, um, is because that one, All My Lovin', it was my introduction to the Beatles. Um, I didn't even technically listen to them <laughs> with this song. At first, um, my aunt had, or maybe it was one of my uncle's records, it was a record that was in my grandparents' house, and it was The Beatles, but sung by the Chipmunks. <laughs> and I really liked listening to that album a lot, because I had a thing about Chipmunks at the time, I was a freaking obsessed with the Chipmunks when I was a kid. So, All My Lovin' was my introduction to the Beatles, <laughs> even though it was the Chipmunks. Also really remember bebopping around singing at the, at the top of my lungs when I was a kid, too. So that one, I think, is probably one of my favorites because that's one of my favorites from childhood. Let me get into the top five. and. Number five is In My Life. Again, with the the opening notes of the song. 
again, a song that somehow makes me happy, puts me deep into my feelings at the same time. It's like singing about things that have changed, people that are gone, you know, but at the same time, hey, it's like the first part is so like kind of grappling with that and then the second half of the song is just like, hey, you're you. You are the person that means the most though in my life. Like it's like, it, it takes like a, a twist there in the song and that's something that I, I don't know, I, I really kind of like that as, as well, the two halves of the song together then creating something that's really beautiful. Again, something that the, the lads were good at is making something beautiful and um, bittersweet, but also sweet. Bitter? Sweet? Yeah. Like, even though I said that I came up with like my top five like that, I really had a moment before I was sitting down to make this video and I was like re-listening to everything again and like trying to think about it and I had to think like, okay, this song is my ultimate happy song. When I am down in the dumps, this is the song that makes me feel the best. Whenever I listen to it, it is on so many playlists that I have. I, it, it feels like spring. That's what this song is. It feels like the light returning. It is beautiful. My number four is Here Comes the Sun. It is a gorgeous song. I think it is the happiest and most cheerful song out there ever. I will fight you on that. Little darling, it feels like years since it's been here. Here comes the sun. Although me saying it like that makes it sound almost like a threat. Here comes the sun. <laughs> I love this song. Like I said, it just, it feels like spring. It feels like listening to it is just like a shot in the ears of pure fucking happiness. It brings me so much joy. I feel like you you can't possibly be terribly sad while listening. I mean, you can still probably be terribly sad, but you, you can't be like down in the depths while listening to that song. Like it, it feels like your spirits lifted just a little bit listening to Here Comes the Sun. I think there is something almost magical about how just the the lyrics and the tune itself, how it's able to make you feel better. And then we move on to number three, which is again moving into the possibly slightly depressing area. Uh, my number three is Eleanor Rigby because at this the youths would say that song slaps. I mentioned like, I think, what was it? Across the Universe being a soundscape? Eleanor Rigby is like a whole freaking soundscape is happening. You've got like what sounds like a partial freaking orchestra while the boys are singing. Then you've got like, it's another one of their, their like story songs. Again, I feel like I'm just using the word iconic way too much, but it, it really is. There, it's trying to get like a message across. It is, uh, it's so freaking good. This, this is also one of those songs that has one of my favorite covers ever um and that's the the one i think it's by i think he's cody fry um i think is what his name is and 
you've probably heard it because it's been all over reels, which I also assume means it's been all over TikTok. It's the, it kind of ups like the orchestra element to it. It's insane. Um, but I, I love the, I mean, I love that cover a lot. Um, but I absolutely adore the original. I, but I, yeah, I really like when they involve like the strings and everything because it does feel like a whole soundscape that you are immersed in as you are hearing the story of like Eleanor Rigby. Like I said, it slaps. I want to talk about something to cheer you up again. My number two is Dear Prudence. Dear Prudence is another one of those songs that is just an instant like feel a little bit better song. Um, it is, again, I think really beautiful. I love the, the build in the music and everything as the song goes along. It starts off pretty simply and just like a little bit of guitar and um, drum a little bit and then kind of builds and builds as it goes along until it reaches like the climax of the song and I love um, all of that. I think it's just beautifully done. Also feels immersive again and yeah there's just I don't know it makes my heart happy when I when I listen to it. I am someone who loves like a good beat and different things being done with them music and stuff like that. Um, my husband and I have actually had a few conversations about this before, that he's very immersed in like the musical side of things, but that makes sense because he is a musician. Whereas while I appreciate the music and things and the notes can definitely affect my emotions depending on how they are put together. For example, I'm not a big fan of super dissonant songs or songs that are all dissonance uh, because it makes me feel off kilter and anxious. <laughs> artists like classical artists like uh, Wagner or something like that just I hate listening to that um, but I still like it's not the tippy top for me what I listen to because I'm not a musician I'm a writer what matters to me I think even more the music is the lyrics themselves now put the two together and you have something really truly amazing obviously um, but lyrics are what really get me and what I really pay attention to the most so something like dear prudence which is like, I don't know, trying to be like a kind of cheer up song, I guess. Or maybe that's me intoning that because this is actually also a song that was featured in the Across the Universe movie. Um, and I don't know, maybe that's me internalizing that. But um, I, I do really love that song and it makes me really happy. Which brings me to my all-time favorite tippy-top number one Beatles song, and that is Hey Jude. I have loved Hey Jude since the first time I ever heard it. Now, I've said that I'm not a musical person, but I uh, was interested in piano and did play it a little bit and very poorly um, for a little while. So um, at the time when I first heard that, I was very deep into my obsession with um, piano, like modern, modern piano. So nothing like classical like more modern players, um, like I, I was super into like um, Vanessa Carlton at the time, and also this song, uh, because Hey Jude is kind of heavy on the piano, <laughs> um, and I was pretty much hooked um, from Paul's opening lines. It is 
I think, one of my ultimate comfort songs. Um, it is something that honestly sometimes when I'm feeling down I'll like sing it to myself a little bit. Um, I just love it a lot. The the lyrics, the music, everything, the the la la la's, the, the whole like ending na 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 ev everything part like just even the part of like where he really gets into it and just like yells like hey Jude 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 like it's everything everything about it all of that together beautiful beautiful to me iconic again the harmonies of everybody together the again the lyrics beautiful comforting there's something so wonderful about it. I love the song so much. I it's on my list of like boy names when me and my husband have kids. I just it's up there for me. I iconic. Anyway, that is my uh my top 10 plus a couple of honorable mentions Beatles songs. Um, I'm sorry if I was particularly rambly or I just like repeat myself. I know I said iconic probably like 15 times. Um, like I said, that's that's what the Beatles are to me. Like they are, uh, yeah, the Beatles and Yellow Card, they are my top favorite bands of all time. Um, they mean a hell of a lot to me. I you notice I don't have you in front of the Beatles wall. That is because the office is currently a mess and I didn't have a good spot to like try to film in front of the Beatles <laughs> um, wall without the camera shaking all over the place. So I have my Beatles shirts um, behind me for the background for you all. But um, if you haven't seen the Beatles wall, I will show you um, that so so you can see what I'm talking about but yeah you'll be able to see um, the Beatles wall I uh, had a calendar of them several years ago and I saved it because I didn't want to throw it out and then I ended up cutting it up and making like this little collage <laughs> of them basically on the wall in the office. Which, by the way, I do fully plan on moving the Beatles wall down to the library when it's completed. I don't think I'll have the same set up exactly. Uh, I have them kind of taped to the wall right now because I didn't care if the paint came off at all because we're eventually going to paint the upstairs. Um, but I don't want to tape it to the freshly painted walls downstairs so I'm not sure if the Beatles wall is going to be uh, become like a Beatles like side of the bookcase if I'm able to like kind of make the collage on the side of one of my bookcases or um, if I'm gonna try to get like a big giant f like poster frame thing and just kind of piece the collage together and put it up on the wall that way but the Beatles wall will um, live again once the uh, library's finished too because I don't want the I don't want to get rid of the lads I like having them around my office so anyway um, yeah sorry if this was uh, rambly and stuff like I said I'm not a a I love music um, but I am not like a musician person so I, I feel like I'm not always that great at describing uh, different things that I enjoy about um, music <laughs> all the time but um, I hope this was enjoyable anyways uh, if you don't know I am a Paul girl although I do love all of the lads and uh, yeah let me let me know um, who's your favorite Beatle what is your favorite Beatles song um, yeah, let me know. Also, Evelyn, 
I want to know what your top 10 Beatles songs are. Anyway, uh, thank you guys for watching so much. Thank you for always watching. Um, if you're new here and would like to subscribe, I don't really talk about music that much, but sometimes I do. Um, mostly I talk about books. But if you're interested in any future musical things or, um, or hearing about books, please do subscribe. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.